One of the things that has come out recently, and we're very, very uh, excited about it, is the state's coastal master plan. Have any of you delved into the state's coastal master plan? I see one. Anybody else? Two? Of course. Three? Well, we were totally excited because the Chafalai National Estuary Research Reserve made the state's coastal master plan. And that coastal master plan is good for, what, three years? It's, it's redone every year. So our Louisiana National Estuary Research Reserve actually got two big pages. And if we could see it, which we will in a few uh, minutes, you can see what it looks like. But I will give you some of the verbiage. And, you know, it says Louisiana National Estuary and Research Reserve, but it talks specifically about the Atchafalaya Basin. It talks about it being the largest river delta estuary in the NERS system. That's, that's going to be totally cool. It talks about it being a living laboratory, laboratories to study estuaries, where we know all the, the great benefit that we have living here, where we do on all the ecosystem. And it says currently NOAA, and the state of Louisiana are moving forward with the NUR designation process. So NOAA and the state moving forward. Now, how is that going to look and sound? Well, we're going to find out next week because the chamber is hosting Dr. Roberts. Dr. Roberts will be here next week. Uh, hopefully you've signed up. And, of course, he is the official, uh, <clears throat> he is the official person for information on how that collaboration between NOAA and the state is going to look and sound. So you will hear, hear it firsthand. I have no idea what he's going to say, but uh, it's going to be important because it aligns with the Coastal State Master Plan. Of course, Kelly uh, Lynn couldn't be here today, but specifically she will be working with the Friends of the Anir, which is the fundraising group that's attached. Whenever you have a Anir, you have a fundraising uh, collaborative group. So that's the report on Anir. Please make plans to be there when Dr. Roberts presents. We were, I'm just moving along, is that all right, Catherine? <laughs> oh, okay, well, we're missing out on some wonderful pictures, but that's okay, because we're prepared. Uh, teachers know when lights go out, uh, we live it, we, we just keep going. Um, what we wanted to share is that the book kept talking about a resilience lab. So would resilience still be needed? Would a resilience lab still be needed? Last summer we presented in front of AIC. We worked with them to show that resilience was still needed. The reason resilience is still needed is because even though you have a near, even though you've got all these resources that come with an ear, the river, you're still susceptible to the <coughs> storm events, you're still susceptible to the rivering flooding. Resilience is still needed. Resilience is needed along the river because it's the river that floods. It's the businesses along the rivers that are impacted. It's the businesses along the river uh, that have to build berms so workers can get to work those days. So resilience is still needed and we were very pleased when Rogers group the group we were presenting to said, we're behind you on this. Uh, everything that y'all are doing, the ANIR, the Resilience Lab, we're behind you on that. So we moved forward. And then in January, we, we reported out to you and we told you we'd, we'd continue writing grants. We told you we'd continue writing grants. So for the last three months, we have been writing grants. Because when you bring people down here, to see an anir, you can't sit, let them sit and see people standing on the sandbar in the middle of the river, which is what happened in 2019, 2020. For the year and a half that it was flooded, that's what people were doing. And that's not good for business. It's not good for industry. So the world is coming and we want to show them our best. We want to show them our best. And our best is partnering. And many of you signed long time ago, letters of support. We got letters of support from State Senator Brett Alla, and we got letters from the city, the town of Berwick, the levy district, the port. Everybody said, 
write grants and see if we can get a resilience lab. So we, we submitted 10 of those. We submitted 10 of those grants to different organizations. And then when we told you in January we were going to spend our time writing, we submitted another one. We submitted another one. But we didn't sit back and say everything we'd been doing so far was perfect. We reached out to additional partners because one of the things we don't want, we don't want it to interfere with what LUMCON is doing. Is this going to duplicate anything with LUMCON? We don't want it to happen. So LUMCON gave us a letter of support that they will follow along with us in this process. We reached out to Dr. Kloon. He wrote a letter of support because if we get the grant that we're writing for, which is a community change grant, it's a community change. It's a change for our community to do something different. They said, let's put the, bio, let, let's put the uh, business incubator there. So we included that into the plan. He wrote us a letter of support. The Water, of Inst the Water Institute wrote us a letter of support for this grant, this particular grant. The governor's office wrote us a letter of support. The governor's office did. LSU wrote us a letter of support. C Grant wrote us a letter of support because we don't want to duplicate anything that any of these entities are doing. And then because we are the only community, not any of the ones that surround us, we are a legacy oil and gas. I don't know how many other communities can say that, but we're legacy oil and gas. We've got the Mr. Charlie that stands there reminds us of that every day. And I'm going to share. I was born and raised in the oil patch, so I am legacy oil and gas. We are in a legacy oil and gas state, but we need a community change. And so when we say, you know, we're going to have entities pushing and pulling against each other, we're not paying, we, we can't do any of that. We've got to align and we have to bring this home now because this is the 11th grant and we don't know if we're going to write a 12th because we've got all of these entities and we've appropriately named it. It is the Atchafalaya Horizons. We take ownership of that Horizon Deepwater event. History not always pretty to look at and sound up, but it's our history and it's impacted our area. So it's our Atchafalaya Horizons Resilience Lab. And we partnered and we submitted our application and we will be waiting for the outcome of it. But we did include what we saw and what Dr. Kloon said he would support. So we appreciate his letter. And if you could catch up with the I slides there. Say that. I know you have to that. Um, any of these endeavors that y'all are embarking upon, President Mary Harris, Dr. Kloon, and the rest of the team fully committed to helping in whatever way we can. That does include that actually um, over here the Office of Research and Sponsor Programs, which is the grant arm of the university. So, in addition to providing letters of support, if and when those opportunities are appropriate to have a hiring partner, we are also willing to be partnered with y'all in some of those things, particularly in your areas of like coastal and near. So, I did want to mention that to y'all as well. Thank you. He's very supportive of what's happening in Xavier. He showed that when he, that was the second time he gave us a letter of support. He gave it to us when we first started, and he gave it to us again, specifically for this grant. So these were our original, and this is what it looks like with our additional letters. We got letters from all of these entities. They are on board, and they are waiting because funding comes down. Political parties come and go, but funding comes, and then you make it happen. So you take advantage of what you've got and we will see if we are successful or not. So we won't go into the details beyond we partnered and are working to get that business incubator so that it can uh, influence it all. And then the next part of the agenda, any questions on any of that so far? It places it on the river, our river, not a bayou, a river, a river. All right, so Cindy today is under the weather, but she exact she sent us her report today. <coughs> her report begins with, there's been a resurrection of a long distance sediment pipe uh, taking place. And you can see that this wasn't a new idea. This was a presentation that was done over 10 years ago 
and now because Gordy Dove is the head of CPRA, it's being resurrected. So you will hear a lot about that. Uh, and Cindy was going to give us a little detail on that, but that's about all that we'll give you right now. Her other part of her report says that the port informed exporters that the ship Linda D with capacity for 40 containers, 40 containers is already at a cat's dock receiving maintenance. It will be ready in two weeks. And um, they're wanting us to wait and see uh, to reserve some space. It has to do with a Cuban American transportation services to begin a commercial shipping line between the port of Morgan City and the port of Havana, Cuba. Were you all aware of that? I saw it today. You saw, saw it today. Somewhere. Okay, well, that's Cindy's report for today. For those of us who did not know that, that's a because they are building the dock. They are building the dock. That's what they said. Start a cigar smuggling business. That's a good idea. All right. All right. Just moving along, I don't know if you've realized, but South Louisiana Community College Young Memorial has changed its logo. I'm on the advisory board. Is there anyone else uh, from SLCC here? Because usually Tammy is always here. Uh, what I like about what they are doing there is that it's so user friendly. It really makes you feel welcome. A lot of times there's discouragement from attending a technical school, but uh, the new design, the design only reflects a physical of what has changed. It's a really uh, a warm, receptive. They change many of their practices so that they're going to better receive students into their program. So they have a new look, and we thought we'd share that today. Uh, hospital Service District. Um, I also serve on the Ashna board. <laughs> yeah. So this is Breakfast with the Docs, and this is the second year that they've done this program, and it's been a great school to work experience. Uh, so if they, they go in before school, they uh, ask questions. So it was a really good experience. All right. Moving along, Carrie, we're for me. Yeah, yeah. we're okay. anything from the Cajun Coast today. All right. Um, I did put some um, Monica. I was informed by Catherine that I had to type everything up, but you didn't have to type. <laughs> <laughs> Just have a one page. Anyway, we time. have a we have a, a calendar of events. Um, I put it over there. Um, there's lots of stuff going on. Um, if you have an event. Go to our website, put your information. It really helps us to include it, to know what's going on. And please give us at least six weeks. Um, I hate Beth knows this. Some people will let us know two days, five days before the event that they're having this event, and they want you to help. So anyway, um, do that. Um, we, our Cajun Coast has been working with uh, Greg for social media, and um, he's also doing Evan's stuff, so it's great. Um, yeah, we just had a bunch, y'all know they had a bunch of events going on. I'll let them talk about that. The big thing, we, um, we're we working on a video um, for KG Coast, our new branding video. The state recently did a new birding trail, so we're on that. Um, if you'd like to do that. Um, I know Virgil's gonna talk about the Mr. Charlie being on the National Register. Uh, the state's working on a, a recreation, a, national, a master recreational plan that webinars this afternoon. Um, I'm sure some of you heard about Madison LeBlanc. She's at the film festival in, I'll pronounce it wrong, Jacob, Khan Festival. I still can't remember how we figured it. Anyway, um, so hopefully she'll get her, her funding for her movie. Uh, we finished. We have a mass. We did our numbers for the year for um, for tourism. I did not bring that, but so far we've had over two thousand people. Um, one day we had a hundred people in our office. It was the day after. What was the last holiday we had? Easter. 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 The day after Easter, we had a hundred people in the office. Um, we have an Fishers of Men fishing tournament in two thousand seven. Uh, we finished our final report for Eagle Expo, 145 people. Monica and I have talked about doing like um, Lanier, like going down to the uh, the coast um, where the land, the delta, where the land is building, but we don't have a boat big enough. If somebody has a boat big enough that we can use, 
I'd be happy, our office would be happy to organize an event um, like we do for Eagle Expo. But uh, Captain Caviar cannot do it, and Ivy can't do it. Um, their boats are too small for that. Um, we did our year-end uh, report. We did our strategic plan. The one thing I want to bring up is I had a meeting with uh, Representative Cablon and um, Senator Allen. And I don't know if you all know, you might know this, but they're closing the Mississippi River Bridge. I don't know if they're closing it completely or if they're bringing it down to one lane, but they are rerouting anybody on their way to New Orleans on Highway 90. Okay, that's in five years. So I think it's important mm -hmm. that we know about this, um, that we're gonna get a lot more. That's why they fixed it up Highway 90, I was told. Um, I know Charlie loves that. No telling what our, uh, this is going to look like in um, at the end of five years um, and how long it's going to take for them to fix the Mississippi River Bridge. I think they're winding it. Evan would probably have. Anyway, I think it's important that you all know that in five years um, that's going to be happening. If you have a small business, it's a great opportunity um, to, um, you know, to get ready for uh, the increased traffic that's going to be on the river. In five years. All right. This is some really big news, Carrie. With this right here. Yeah. We have, um, this is actually a, 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 a comment, a public comment we made on the state master plan. We're really excited, and Carrie's going to get $333,000 in 2025 on the state master plan for a boardwalk behind the Cajun Coast. So, and, and then she's got $167,000 on the state master plan in 2026. So, we're really excited. This is it. my excitement because it's only been on the plan for about 10 years. We never had money. We never had money. This this had money. With money. But yeah. um, you know, Paul, to say, Paul, um, who was our parish president? Nakam. Nakam. Paul Nakam was on the Atchafalaya National, no, Atchafalaya Basin Program mm -hmm. before they merged with um, the other group. So, but yeah. You know, but, 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 but supporting, say one thing. supporting and supporting that, supporting yeah. Cajun Coast, supporting the near, supporting all these things. Right. Sending public comments yeah. in. Yeah. We sent the comment in this year. And, and doing those things, make they, it makes It's important for, for outdoor, because that's our big draw, here. is the outdoor activities. And so whatever we can to do the infrastructure um, to get people out in the outdoors is right. important. Which is, leads us to the next one. Well, before we leave, is that... Is that our school? We're going to let uh, Rachel go next. Yeah. Okay. We're, we appreciate you being here, Dr. Sanders. I know Dr. Fagenbush wanted to be here. We look for greater opportunities to, uh, to support the system. Uh, and we support that through uh, connecting school to work, school to work. Uh, and I don't know if there's anything you want to share that, you know, just appreciate being here. Did you learn anything? Uh, is it something where you want to always have representation? Uh, you know, because we, we do feel like education, you know, is, is a strong. I think our greatest collaboration in the area right now is definitely working with um, our Young Memorial Campus right there. Um, we have lots of programs that go through them. We've always had a good relationship. I feel like it gets stronger with each year. Um, I know we're going to have some um, jumpstart summers programs that are starting up over the 90s of the summertime some of our high school kids to get some of their um, and they'll get certifications get which certifications. put them right to work yes ma'am and so we're excited about that um large group will be going um next week so well, we wanted to recognize your presence you. and appreciate your comments and you know we meet quarterly and if there's things that we can help you push out across a broad spectrum please don't hesitate all right Thanks and then you got everyone have a good day have a good summer too and that leads us to the next school project Mike, Levy District. Um, so we were fortunate enough. Uh, was that last week? I think it was last week. Last yeah. week, we were able to bring <laughs> two of the local <laughs> high schools, uh, Patterson High School, Martin City High School, out to work with uh, Louisiana Sea Grant, is it Louisiana? Mm -hmm. NOAA, uh, St. Mary Soil and Water Conservation District. In NRCS, which I was not aware was present. Um, the Sheriff's Department, the Levy District, uh, Coast, Guard. Coast Guard had a rep out there. Franklin, Franklin Fire, 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 Fire Department had a EMT out. 
LSU Ag was out there. But what we did was we went out and planted marsh grass out at Burns Point. Um, I know at first a lot of the kids were skeptical about it because they had to get out of the boat and get into the water and into the mud and into the and they just jumped right in. They did, and the initial the initial shock to them was, uh, you know, especially the girls that were giggling, and the, you know, they've never stood in a place where you sink to your hips in mud. Uh, so once they got through the giggling and the laughing about the whole thing, they jumped in and they went to work. And it was it was amazing. We planted uh, Andrea Dumasel from the Salt Water Board was her main objective. I have to get these 6,000, 6,000 plants in the ground. There were probably 15 boatloads of plants that we brought out. Um, these kids jumped in and got it done. She was so worried about it, but we were done by, I think we were back in the boat launch for one o'clock. She said record time, it was done in record time. Yeah, we did it in two groups. Morgan City went out first, and then Patterson went out second. And we learned a ton about setting this all up. The kids, I was at Patterson High School yesterday, uh, walked in to check my son out, and they had a bunch of administrators and teachers in the office, and they could not stop talking about it. They were like, every kid that did this, they, they just had a blast. Um, and then I'm seeing what this, is that one of your kids? Yeah, middle of yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, that's what I'm shooting for. That's what I'm pushing is I know in the field that I work in, they're looking for engineers, they're looking for coastal scientists, they're, they're looking for, everyone needs these people. These kids have not been exposed to this kind of stuff. They go out, now this kid's like, hold up, I can go to college for this. And that, that's what we're pushing for. Right, and one of our females even said she's considering the Coast Guard now because the Coast Guard talked to them when they got off the boat, remember, had a, a little session with them. And she said, I had never thought about it before, and it's on the radar now. So. And, and look, uh, I was amazed because I obviously know some of the kids at Patterson because my son goes there. Um, one girl in particular who is always dressed to the nines, you know, very frilly girl. Um, her brother graduated and he was like, I'm not going, uh, I'm not going to get in the mud, you know. And I gave him some stuff for it, you know, like, come on, man. His sister got out there, worked her tail off, covered in the mud, you know, and enjoyed it tremendously. Um, so we are looking forward to next year. Um, I was, my call this morning I didn't do was, I wanna find out how many plants can you get? You know, how many days out of the year can, can we do this? We wanna bring more schools in. I have, Leslie took advantage of, of, you know, basically what I had to offer to the students this year uh, so I've made a couple visits to Martin City High School to do some things. They've come here. We've had engineering and scientists come in and talk to the kids. I want to expand on that. I want more kids involved. I want to plant 50,000, you know, plants next year. In any industry that we can expose them to. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Any, like we'll go with anybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with a reason, but I'm saying if it, I find, I've been, teaching for 17 years now and the most effective impactful moments are when we get them out of the classroom and in the community and we just need a lot more they're, they're just not ex they're not exposed to hardly anything what's up yeah, they didn't anything. know we had a downtown area I tried one of the girls for a uh, ring ceremony she needed she lives in Amelia she needed an outfit and she said I don't know where to go my sheen order didn't come in on time or whatever and I said oh my gosh go downtown what's downtown I said oh my god we're all in a bus and we're about to just go on a tour of Morgan City gave her directions she went found something I, they just don't know and, and I'm gonna exploit every avenue I have from, right. from my job to get these kids to see some of these different things in those avenues. One thing I'm gonna throw out there is the Leadership St. Mary. We need to do the kids too. We're working on it. Even We're if it's a summer program, because look, I went through leadership yeah, exactly. and 
I didn't realize the things that were going on in St. Mary. Mm -hmm. you know, it's a lot of it's even our adult, well, adult stuff. Well, yeah. the one thing that we're going to say is you can't outsource what y'all did. What you mean? Like you can't replicate that elsewhere. Like no, absolutely not. Burns well, Point. We planted down the Delta. I figured out the acreage. That's I think it was why. like three acres. We mm -hmm. the, the kids understand what they were doing. I mean, oh, oh yeah, they. they the activities. Oh, that was the one of the best yeah, parts yeah. was the educational activities after. It made me want to be a science the teacher. The result. You know, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh yes. I had but to be they went. So we flip flopped. Projects. We went in the boat first. We did the plantings. <coughs> we came back. They showered off and they, uh, they changed into the clean clothes. They had a little lunch. And then there were presentations, but it was like a business model. You know, they, they had a, a map of the coast. They said, you have X amount of dollars. You have X amount of uh, strategic uh, resources and ideas. How are we going to shore up the coastline? How are we going to protect it and restore it? And they had to, they had to work collaboratively. Like at first, they were working against each other. I got this much money, and I'm going to do coastal restoration. I got this much money, I'm going to do you know, different things. Um, and then they ha they decided, well, if we share our money, then we can, you know, protect all of Louisiana coastline because we're all in it together. And the kids came to that that realization themselves without, without us prodding them. There were math problems, uh, word problems about um, alligator farming. And what else? They did soil. Uh, there was like a soil, a salinity or a soil water test. They did that. Uh, there was a little alligator on site. That, all sorts of educational activities after. And so what we decided is, because um, after being in the sun and being in the water, and it was that was physical work trying to get through, you know, uh, the, the marsh and all the soil. Um, just having the educational part before, maybe in this building. Um, Where did the last lesson? Burns, Burns Point. Point. We went out of Burns Point. And so we did all that outside, which was great. So Patterson had the educational part first, and then they jumped in the water. But it would have been nice to break it up into a, a classroom setting or something like that. But it so was. We're going to get there. They align with the curriculum. Yeah. Uh, with so, our curriculum. So that's why we're excited that Sea Grant has. I it was so cool. it's, really um, it's sort of like a, it's a, it's a work in progress. Yes, it is. Yeah. And, and look, I'm, yeah. my mind's, I, this is stuff I've been thinking about for a while. I, I would like to see some of these students that are interested in the stuff that we do, get them involved in our projects. Let them come out and see the studies we do that I went and presented to their, their the senior class for their research papers. Hey, we still do research papers, right. you know, mm -hmm. and get those kids involved and immersed in this stuff. Right. So it leads them in some sort of a direction. Um, even I know if we put, you know, I keep throwing out the coastal team, mm -hmm. coastal club. Mm -hmm. Team sounds cooler. They don't want to be a club. They want to be on a team. Right. Um, get them in a boat. Do, a, do, <laughs> that, do a coastal team at the different schools. Have them write grant proposals to get money for coastal restoration. It's there. Mm -hmm. Get them involved, give them ownership in it. And they'll just run, you'd be surprised. They don't think run. he had a no, good time gonna or bring what? Kids today. Yeah, yeah, I was, was gonna, gonna bring fun. kids here yeah. today, but they're not in school. And, 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 well, and Leslie yeah. sent us uh, all the comments that the, the students were making, and we'll put those out, and she's gonna put them out on Facebook, and, uh, so you can sorry. read them, <laughs> but you can read this, <laughs> and you can see how excited they were. Uh, and then the team's idea is great. It was a lot of fun. When when we first got in, Leslie, those kids were like, uh, yeah. They and then they just they just went for it. And then after it was over with, and Christine, my sister, teaches at the high school. She said she teaches art, and the kids came in and she said, well, what did you, "How was the field trip <laughs> yesterday?" And she was waiting for them to go. It was hot. And it was muddy. And it was you know. They, they loved it. Oh gosh, that was the best. Like, that was the best thing we ever did. She was shocked. She 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 came and told me that she was so surprised that they had such a great time. So anyway, well, even right, some of the kids that I've seen go, yeah, I, I told them no, you go Something on. Never been in All right. After they were, like, this All was right. Great. Mike, can you talk about yeah, this for just sure. two minutes? Um, that mean? is top secret. Uh, I can't tell you. <laughs> that's that's um, no, <laughs> yeah, it's in the master plan. We do have funding for this project. We're just working through some of the hurdles currently. Um, 
Yeah, there's some hurdles there. But the money is there, the money, there and it's there parceled is, over three years, and it's about four million each year, five million there, each year. We, we have some money okay. to, finish the to, do, yeah. to do the lake front is currently one I can touch on this too the lake front is the only gap we are the gap on the LA 70 discharge canal is going to be closed as soon as I can push my permit through we already have a contractor scheduled he's got everything ready to go we're going to get that canal plugged so that we were supposed to have the Morgan City area uh, formally inspected on April 15th uh, and if they would have done it then they would not have included some of the new levy alignments what they their inspection reports go into the National Levy database that FEMA uses for their risk ratings and the flood insurance and that stuff so I didn't want I didn't want it to go in with the old alignment. We wouldn't have gotten credit for any of the work that's been done over the past you know, five or right. six years. So I'm holding them off. We get the plug in. <laughs> they can inspect it formally the way we want them to, and we'll get credit for everything. Good. And Good. then this, this we are we are working on. Uh, it's the work of progress. Good. All right, we're going to go quickly now. We're going to. I have to go, y'all. Sorry. All right. Thanks, Les. See you. How about the chamber? Yep, put, put a picture oh. up. We're going to give you a picture. Okay. Okay. Because y'all been busy too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, last week, our, our leadership class visited the Water Institute in Baton Rouge. It was the first visit we've had there. Miss um, Monica already touched mm -hmm. on our luncheon next week with Dr. Roberts at the Petroleum Club in Morgan City. If you're not signed up, usually Friday is our cutoff. We have to let the Petroleum Club know, so let us know if you want to attend. Um, he'll be talking about the Atchafalaya National Estuarine Research Reserve. A couple of things that we're working on. Our annual education appreciation state dinner and auction is set for June 20th. That is how we fund our $9,000 in scholarships annually. Um, it's been very slow this year. We are questioning if we're going to be able to continue with the program the way that it runs now with $9,000 in scholarships. Uh, we may have to come back in future years if we're not able to keep going at the rate we've been in the past. But we're still working on it. So that is something that anyone is welcome to come to. There's a member rate and a non-member rate, of course, for the state dinner. And we have a silent auction and a live auction at that event. And it takes place at Patterson Civic Center. Other things happening in June. Uh, Soul Food Fest takes place in Franklin June 14th through 16th. We usually do a kickoff party on the Thursday evening prior to that. June 26, we will have a post-legislative breakfast with Senator Island and the representatives at Bayou Bend Wellness Center. What day was that? For the breakfast, it's June 26. <coughs> we have three ribbon cuttings currently scheduled in June the 3rd for a grand opening of Amelia Library. Also on the 3rd, Visions and Vibes here in Morgan City. And on the 7th, we'll be doing a ribbon cutting and grand opening for Wildflowers, grand reopening for Wildflowers expansion. Some things that we're looking into starting in July would be a women's association. I've talked to Ms. Colleen about hosting our first event and also starting a next gen association, which is a um, young entrepreneurs group. Last week, I attended a meeting in Thibodeau, which the intention of the meeting is to start a regional alliance group similar to that of One Acadiana for the Bayou region. It's not something that we currently have, so it's something that we're going to work towards. Roger will be invited to the next meeting as well, um, and we'll have, there's actually a lot of seats that will be filled at the table to try to get that up. And something that we're going to work on for the 2024 and 25 school year is to have two students from each high school sponsored and able to attend our luncheons monthly um, just to be able to get their feedback have them answer ask questions and have participation in the different events especially with us getting more involved with things that really push our community forward and hopefully step into the next generation with that generation included. That's awesome. Question. Yes. The young entrepreneur thing is 
like what age group are you looking for? So we will be kind of following what Thibodeau has done. They actually hosted one, I believe, at the Bayou Incubator. Um, it was very well attended. I think their cutoff was 35. <laughs> <laughs> you can identify. <laughs> Maybe you could be like young in terms of your visiting. <laughs> but it, it is, they did have, I know, a great response from people that were just beyond the cusp to be there kind of as a mentor that didn't really fit into that young stage now, but were there I like as mentors. Just says, uh, like a young business, not yeah. necessarily a young person. Right. Yeah. One more question. Um, my question is, how do y'all plan to get this information out to the public? Because I find when it comes to things for business or young people, there's a lack of communication. We're and it doesn't working, get to where it needs to. We're building our relationship continually with the school board and really working with them on getting information out to the schools. Some things will, of course, take place during the summer, so we'll have to rely mostly on social media for that. <clears throat> Um, Any of the municipalities? Hey, Mayor Duval, you're here. And I'm here. <laughs> you are here. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank, Thank you all for the card, by the way. You're welcome. Very thoughtful. Uh, got a lot of things going on in Berwick. I just want to talk about grants because this, this pretty, much, pretty much consumed me. And uh, we have done extremely well. We just received certification and verification that we got a uh, 4.35 million dollar gas grant similar to Morgan City got uh, last year and uh, we were approved for it this is going to allow us to put about 17 miles of new PE pipe on the ground right now we have a lot of what's known as PVC pipe and I'm sure you all are familiar with that but that's, that pipe is soon going to be outlawed as far as using it for gas lines so we're trying to get ahead of the game and replace that now by putting PE pipe down there, which has got three times the uh, uh, shelf life of the uh, UVC pipe. We uh, also, the um, Department of Highway, the flood grant we have for the country club estates, I think I mentioned that we that was approved for a million and a half, and then pandemic hit and uh that wasn't even close to i had the same problem y'all had when you try to go to the the, the building contractors they said no, no no we ain't fooling with this so we asked the state and they were gracious enough to allow us to reapply but keep the money that we had so we had a million and a half in the bank we applied we got another million and a half so that's going to be enough to cover the grant. June the 1st, that should get funded. And uh, we've been told that it's already been approved, but we got to wait till June the 1st before we get the, the stamp of approval. Uh, paving 6th Street uh, by the ponds, that's already approved. The grant's been approved for $800,000 to do that. It's going to. Uh, uh, the last street we had burned, it wasn't paid. And we're, we're able to do that with this grant. We haven't started to work on it yet because we're still waiting on the environmental uh, <coughs> survey that we that we uh, supposed to be attached to it to get approved. Um, let's see. We're in the process right now. Tomorrow we're going to uh, send in our $2 million dollar water improvement grant for the town of Berlin. In that grant, we're gonna have some new water lines, uh, new water meters, a lot of a lot of good things, improvements in our water system. Um, I uh, wanna mention the Brown House. Uh, we, we were approved for that. Uh, we had to get creative in, in writing the grant up on that by allowing us to use the Brown House, the new building, as a medical center for, for um, dishing out in case of another pandemic. Mm -hmm. We'll have a local place in, in town that we'll be able to, people will be able to walk there and get their medicine or whatever they need for 
the uh, pandemic. So we use that. The Brown House building will be used for that in case of an emergency or pandemic. And uh, it's going to give them, I don't know how many square feet it is, but it's going to, it's more than a whole building in the front. So they're going to have an exhibition hall there where they can have meetings or they can do whatever they want to do there. But they'll be able to exhibit history of Berwick and, uh, and, and do it in a, just have more room to do it and look, and look nicer. Uh, last thing on uh, uh, Colleen's here, and I'm certainly not going to steal any thunder from her. <laughs> she is a busybody, and uh, she's our busiest counselor, without a doubt. And uh, you want to tell them about uh, the things we got coming up in the all the way to the um, playoffs, Pastor? Um, just working on that every month. We need. Um, I don't know. I, just, I, don't know. I can't even think right now. I'm just. Well, um, well, we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing a live after five uh, on Friday nights. So, and we're talking about doing that. Again, we don't want to compete with Morgan City because they had restarted their rhythm on the river. So we uh, just don't. I, I we just haven't come up with the month yet because June and May is hot and. October is we're real busy for the festival because it's the first weekend in November. Um, you did the Cinco de Mayo. Yeah, that was that was fun. Um, not really. I mean, I, I'm not sure if we're doing the um, truck or treat at the lighthouse um, food court or not. We just we haven't gotten that far yet. We, we can't plan it in advance. It's just. A couple of people we have planned, and we don't have like a whole staff of of people getting paid or anything. So we just kind of fly off the top. Um, so I heard you. City. Morgan City. Okay. Morgan City. <laughs> well, Colleen, if you get some stuff, you make sure to let us know. <laughs> if you plan, it, if you okay. plan some things, let us know. And, I mean, there's yeah. some things that I want to do. I want to yeah. um, put some planners downtown. Yeah. Put some flowers and stuff like okay. that. So I'm kind of working with. Yeah. He don't even know that. But Mr. <laughs> Dale Fungi, he's got. Um, he, hopefully, he has big planners. He wants okay. to get rid of. Oh. And so we can put them around. That would be nice. Yeah. yeah we I have another couple of people that want to finish painting the crosswalks downtown. Um, okay. Just trying to make it appealing for people to come around. Okay. And we're going to have that bridge opening soon. So yeah, we're going we to play. Yeah, we are going to play. bike so rides back. <laughs> or lunch on top of the old bridge. Yes. Open. So we have a little, I, I'm sure it's going to be the festival committee that kind of plans that also. Yeah. We're, we're opening the bridge sooner than it's going to be open, but we're going to be hopeful. So yeah, we, we, we do need lights on the bridge though. So yes. maybe somebody can write some grant. And that's going to, that. oh, okay, that's Morgan that. City, Charlie, you can figure out the lights and tell us what's going on and how, where we're putting those lights, where we're getting money from. <laughs> well, the Morgan City Bird shared the cost on it. I, I wouldn't mind joining with them to, uh, to do this. Yes. Uh, I just think it'd be a, a Big plus when you see that lighted bridge. I know in Baton Rouge you go across and it always looks so nice. Mm -hmm. We need to have that. We need to be really different. We're going to Anything from the city? Go ahead. Okay, anything from you? Uh, city? Morgan City? Uh, in writing grants, I, I want to. Oh. Oh. Carrie's been a big help to me in Forest, giving me information on uh, how many cars go across that bridge uh, on, a, on a daily basis. Anybody? Anybody besides you can answer that question? About 30,000 cars go across the bridge every single day. Mm. 30,000. <laughs> so, I would not like to guess. Anyway, and the kids that there that uh, yeah. 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 the 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 next five years. And we've been able to identify 96.1 people come to Burbank every day for different reasons. To put over a boat to go fishing, to visit the lighthouse, go to the brown house, visit a relative, or just come to Burris for the recreation that we have there. Or to the farm, is that not a shop? Lounge. Whatever else we're trying to go. We're trying. 
Are you sampling everything you're making? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're beautiful. Thank you. All right. You did a great job. City Thanks. of Morgan City. Anything? I know the bike people are out there today. But. Yeah, they actually wore today because that's been a weather well, has not been playing a good part of our walking trail. So I know y'all keep a close eye on that, but they all work. I saw them place. this morning. If we get a, a few good weeks of good weather, we should be able to finish it. We drag it on and raise it along. Um, we finally, we've been talking about a water plant for I feel like 20 years now. We finally signed a contract and everything's on order, so we will be breaking ground on the water plant here in the next. Great. Over the next month, um, we have us that gas brand. We still have that. I hope y'all are real quick than ours. That's my nightmare. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. um, what else we got going on? Of course, we did that, the stuff down on Main Street. Vanessa did had a few things on it. That was a real huge success. It was just a, and we're looking at doing some other things. Obviously, it's too hot to do anything right now. <laughs> um, she is doing some kind of bougie bingo or something coming up in a couple of weeks. That would be kind of interesting. I think those guys at Jojo's or at the Green Room at Jojo's. You see that on Facebook. Um, cemetery, actually, I just got a phone call yesterday. I wanted to send out flyers from a mailer to uh, start a mausoleum, a pre sale mausoleum. Like everybody kind of does now. We're going on our space or whatever. We're doing now. We're going on our space. What else we got going on? Um, the 4th of July at the lake. We get to use our unfinished pavilion, but it should be pretty close by then. Um, got that going on. Mm, she was talking about grants that we, we got a few big grants out in the making, crossing our fingers. Of course, I'm talking to her. Unfortunately, we lost our grant writer. She's still helping us remotely a little bit. But, um, yeah. Oh, she she went, uh, yeah. Oh, wow. She's doing one for the great job. Yeah, she's good. But mm -hmm. she still she still comes in and oversees some stuff she started already, so well, I appreciate everything Vanessa does. Because every time that you do something over there it benefits both towns. I mean it, it really does. People have something to do, an activity to go see, uh, to go meet friends. It, it's just good for our community. So there's yeah, no just, competition. Yeah, no, no, just do I, I just yeah, like what y'all have to do. Yeah. Now, I think I said this before. You always hear people that have nothing to do here with kids. And the question I ask them, okay, tell me what do you want us to do right. for your kid? And none of them can answer the question. I wouldn't say not so much as there's nothing to do. If there is something to do, the people in the community don't know what it is and where it is and, and when it is. That was, I'm glad you brought it up too, like, because you brought up advertising and, and, and communication. It's so hard. Like, I thought it was hard. I've been in retail all my life. And it, it was hard before to advertise to people. <laughs> you know, you get yeah, newspaper, radio. It's a hundred times harder now because you got, I don't know, maybe 10% on Facebook, you know, 40% on, so on Twitter. Options. Uh, on an Instagram, you have TikTok, all these other things, and then you still have the newspaper and the radio. So it's, it's you know, you would think it'd be easier nowadays. It's a hundred times harder to advertise today than it was 30 we years ago. We cover all fronts and still people I mean, it, don't you know, know it, it, it's, people. it's well, in a newspaper, you only got a newspaper a couple of days a week. Right. And, and a lot of times, like, well, if somebody uh, um, a pass away and you don't even, you read it in the paper, but they buried them yesterday. Yeah. You know, that's the problem and with the algorithms. Yeah. So that's why it's so important that we know so far ahead. You know, like I say this every year, Christmas is December 25th. <laughs> every year, it never changes. You call them in October. Well, oh, I don't know what we're doing. In November, we meeting in November. I'm like, Christmas is December 25th. Like, you should know if, if you're going to have your event, look at the calendar and plan it so that we can get a full calendar. Because it's frustrating for us when we try to put a cal Christmas calendar out and, you know, the dates change and then they bash at us on Facebook. Oh, no, 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 you know, your dates won't, well, you know, if you wouldn't have changed your date or if you'd have stuck to your plan, you know, this would not happen. That was the thing I wanted to, uh, last, I remember last year I brought this up. I'd like for Morgan City and Berwick to sit at the same table and look at our planning for the whole year Absolutely. so that we can plan it out when we don't 
compete with each other. Y'all yeah. gonna do something in June, we'll do something in July. Y'all yeah. gonna do something in July, we do something in August. And that way we don't compete, but we just make it better. Yeah. And we, we have an idea of what's going on. One, one other thing I wanna say, not, I mean, we, all of a sudden, back to what she was saying, but my kids don't, he said, no, no, we're, we're doing a different summer camp this year. We used to do a two, two, two week session. We're doing five, one week sessions. And they got like, a, they had the church group come last year and kind of set the bar. They did it over the whole week. So we, we're not gonna mimic them because Chick-fil-A was sponsoring them. So I would say they had fun. <laughs> but we're doing, working out of Shannon, we're doing five, one week sessions. And they, we got an early drop off. So, and they, they got a pretty a good agenda for the kids to do. So we're trying to get that development of them that, that you know, do something. And that's, I think, um, you gotta finish from first grade to fifth grade, I think it is. How much is it? I think it's one, no, no, I think it's like one point five, but they do they do they do a lot of a lot of stuff. Now you see oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I was just gonna ask about the calendar thing because it came up at the meeting last quarter. Um I, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like most of the calendars are passive, right? Like you have to go out and put your thing on someone's calendar. You can put it on chamber. We like do you, both. Y'all are active on like like a holiday calendar. We I have a list, and I have a girl in my office who starts calling and okay. says, and "When is your event? Days. When is your event? When is your event?" Well, that's what I mean. So like to, to take me. I mean, we don't. You know, we're learning things as we've been in the community longer about when they are things like that. But like, it's not. There's things that are on yours that aren't on yours and vice versa. And it just seems like that would not be terribly, I mean, maybe I'm We try. Naive. We yeah. try. I mean, that, we, we consult, we call, right. hey, what's on your calendar? Call KQKI. We monitor Facebook. Um, we do events on Facebook, go to Eventbrite. Right. We are very, we are aggressive. And still miss things. Sure, and that's going to happen. But I mean, it would be nice uh, if, like, I'm just thinking proactively here. Like, if you could, I know you make a lot of social media posts and things like that. Maybe one every so often, just about the calendar existing in and of itself, not just the events that are coming out. But like, don't See, forget yeah. to like let us know because there was a major issue, don't for example, as far as some mm -hmm. of the nonprofits go, where uh, Junior Auxiliary was doing their event, their big you know the biggest one for them which is their poker casino night whatever ended up being on the same night as Kiwana's trivia night I believe which killed it I mean just killed yeah. it and like literally Jay done they don't exist anymore they were going to do it they couldn't get participation in it because Kiwana trivia night and they were on the calendar already not trivia night Jay was on the calendar already but nobody checks the damn calendars and, and we have once trivia night is too big it just shut it down and like and it's done there, there's no more junior auxiliary okay. of, you yeah, same area. Equal point, and what you're saying is so true, and that that's a big problem. And yeah. Because, of the, because we could talk about that. Oh, they bring projects. Here. We're trying and to that's something that we need like. to get together, or we need the, the people who make the calendars. Maybe this is something we could get together at a different time and really figure out something. Like there's got to be. I'm just happy to hear it's active. I wasn't sure if it was like passive, like, hey, you no, put it on here, it's there. If you don't put it on here, it's not there. Y'all call me or email me. Right. Right. Yeah, he does. Right. Right. So, so, right. I know it may seem strange, but it's a little old school, but it also may help because I feel like in the community, it should be for everybody. For those who don't want to participate or make a change, I get it. But one suggestion that I would have, like, I have my own office. And of course, I'm with the black community. so. So I'm gonna speak for us. We don't know what's going on, okay? We don't even know where to find it or how to find it. And I'm gonna say partially, it's gonna be on us because we need to look. So here I am raising my hand. In my office, when you go to local small businesses, and a lot of here is local small businesses owned by people in the community. I would love to see in one spot, or maybe more than one, those who may be members of the chamber or not, those who just wanna get it out into the community, speaking for myself. I would love to see a board in my office to where when people come in, because I provide essential services, when people come in, if they're looking, you can see what's going on in the community. Oh, I didn't know that was here. Just, just like when people are looking for fishing license, they recommend, oh, go down the street or go here. Same thing, if you're looking for something in your community and you wanna know what's going on, you're going to your people and you wanna know where it is. It would be nice if some people, some offices has the room, you have people going to a cash register 
you know, just let know what's going on in the community. Because let's be honest, we're real small. So Morgan City and Berwick, they should be at the same table because you're only just across the bridge. And we can't be two and three places at one time. And it's a lack of resources. That will begin to bring the people together so nobody feel left out. Because y'all have to realize we are behind and the older people that's here, they don't do social media, so no, they won't know. They don't listen to the radio because they say the same thing over and over. Nobody wants to buy this two-page paper. So let's be real. The only other thing you have now to communicate to where we are is visualization. Meaning they need to be able to walk into a room, not every room, not every office, but walk into somewhere where they go frequently and say they have a board. Like back in the day when you went to the grocery store, you knew, or even when you go to the washeteria, for those of you who may have to go, there's a big old board that lets know what's going on in the community because everybody is not elevated to sit in a room and know what's going on and where, or have people in a place to tell them that. So it's definitely something we need to work on. I mean, we print out our calendars and give them out at luncheons, and we have them available at our office for anybody to take when they come in and things like that. We put it out on social media and mail it out. So. What, what kind of board? Is this an electronic board? Yeah, grocery store. Yeah. Board. We put a yeah. big screen yeah. TV in the front of all yeah. the office. Yeah. Yeah. And on that screen, it's got current events and things <laughs> that are going on in Berwick. Mm -hmm. And we try to keep people abreast. When you come pay your water bill, you're looking right at that screen. You see something like that. Yes. But, but, you talk awesome. paper. Yeah. but I, I'm talking paper, paper because, paper now mind you, people really don't read much because I agree. If it's not dancing in light so blitzy, <laughs> they pat, they overlook it because, y'all, nobody in America reads. But nevertheless, That's true. if they don't see it or know where to find it, we're going to stay where we are. We cannot continue to communicate on a level that's not reaching everybody. And that's just that. Yeah, that's great. Well, I think that's a common problem across our country. It is. You know, it, it really is. Because all the older ones are scared of computers, don't want to get involved in them, and then it just passes them by. And that's and then, how we kind of bridge the gap when you have both of them together. Because if you have your older people and they get to communicate with the younger people, they're going to help. But when you have the two not existing in the same room, you can't help a person. Right. I get tired of seeing Lee's face as a baseball player or a softball player. <laughs> or but it, that's the only yeah, way yeah, I knew that's it. Hilarious. That's literally the yeah. only way that I knew yeah. that there was softball and baseball yeah. sign-ups last that's year, for example. Yeah. So if there's just a sign sticking out there that says like community calendar, blah, 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 dot com or whatever, just, it doesn't have to have, even if it's not, mm -hmm. you know, those are great ideas. Like things that are, yeah, for, I, know, I know QR codes. I mean, QR, uh, QR sometimes code. QR codes, whatever, it's not necessarily the greatest thing in the world, but um, if there's just something where it's just like, you just know to go there to check it out would be nice. And if it was coordinated enough to where this is gonna have you know, whether it's chamber or it's the, the you know, tourism, whatever it may be. Um, I, I would be very appreciative of something like that because, you know, there was like, like the, the only comic con that's in Louisiana was in Morgan City a few months ago, for example. Just randomly at Rotary one day, I was like checking the calendar, I saw it, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna take the kids. They had a blast. Very weird. But they had a blast. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, it was exactly what you think it was gonna be. You know what the gala told me? Yeah, the gala like, told me that was their best day since they've been open. Mm -hmm. yeah. They had a bunch was of that Saturday? Yeah. Oh, no, they well, of course, they had all the restaurants that was open on Saturday. Yeah, but. yeah now there's like a semi-annual one coming up now, yeah. you know. So it's, it's, this is it's, just, it's the biggest event in the auto It always it's comes crazy. up, so it's a really big problem that we need to address. So we'll have a breakout meeting between now and our next meeting is basically what we'll do. All right, we're going to go I, on. I'd like to volunteer to put together to the do? towns. Oh, that would be wonderful. Because it's already, we're already in the middle of the year. And I think in January, they listed everything on their Facebook page. Morgan City did. And so maybe if we talk, I mean, even Franklin does a lot of stuff. Set up the meeting. Yeah, I don't send know. Send stuff out. You set up the meeting, and then we can start talking about this. Some ways that some some different ways that we can make. Well, that's, wouldn't the cities benefit by hiring social media uh, advertisers? You got one like say, Right, I know we do, but I mean <laughs> to okay, hit all the different um, Instagram, TikTok, all of them at once instead of just going to Facebook or whatever one we're using. 
child well, I think that's when child labor is illegal because you need a nine-year-old. <laughs> oh, I know. Well, they got they got professionals that do Technically, it. Technically, they got to be thirteen. Or something. You know, that's what they're really doing. It's trying yeah. to find yeah. yourself. So this is a breakout meeting, I guess, yeah. is what right. we're talking about. Colleen, we appreciate you offering to host and begin yeah. to set that up. And, and thank you. I'm gonna be a good person on that committee. Yeah. Nessa's not here. She needs to be on the committee. There, everybody. You have some good ideas, Sunshine. You would be a good person on the committee. I mean, because we have to discuss ways to reach everybody in different ways. That's what's important. <coughs> in different ways, too. Because, again, like Jacob said, I see the sign, but I don't look at social media that much. Even Not though I've got more cameras and all this, I, I really don't do that. Mm -hmm. So, but we're going to go on because Virgil has to share. I was, I was at the, um, I was watching the um, presentation to designate the Mr. Charlie Offshore Oil Rig National Surf Landmark Designation. So I took some pictures on screenshots. I know Roger, you were on this, the, the watching. And you, all the people that were watching the presentation was really good. But yeah, it was all, it was very good. So just share, Virgil, the news, the next step. Okay, well, the National uh, Historic Landmark Committee uh, met last week uh, to look at our nomination and they uh, voted unanimously to pass it on to the uh, National Parks uh, Advisory Board, which uh, hopefully will meet uh, before August, but last year they met in August, so we're, <laughs> the sooner they meet, the sooner we might know something. Uh, and from there it goes to the Secretary of the Interior. Uh, National Park Service would tell you it's not a rubber stamp just because you pass the committee, but it seems to be. And. Um, from every indication, we will get that designation. Uh, we appreciate all the letters that were sent in, several from people in this room. Uh, we have over, we have, I think at this point, at least 31 letters of recommendation, uh, way more than any other group that was there. Our, the meeting was better attended for us than any other group. Um, and we had several that spoke uh, from the, the governor's office, the lieutenant governor's office, secretary, I mean, uh, Senator Kennedy's office, uh, all of those were actually speakers at the meeting. Uh, the committee did have a few questions for us and comments, uh, and when they voted, the vote was taken that those would all be addressed between now and the advisory committee meeting. So, so all that will be done, and so we should get that designation later this year. It's great. It's very, it's great. And so the, the history of it, it was just so interesting to listen to the presentation. I mean, I've been to the museum, I, we understand it, we don't, we really don't know, which is, I'm gonna to go to the next slide. And um, this is, uh, and I have these handouts that um, that Greg had uh, come up with for us. The history of our area is so important. With the Mississippi Museum uh, highlighting the, um, the uh, oil and gas industry here and what we, we contribute to the country. What was really interesting about what they were, their comments too, about trying to look at all the aspects of the industry in our community and how it affected everybody here in different ways. And um, so that history is gonna be very important if we get the Chapel and National Western Research Reserve as well because that's what they'll focus on, our culture, the people who are here, the people who were here before, the people who have left, the people that we hope to, to get back here. But um, I'm gonna let uh, Bree those banners in the back were some banners that we came up with. We designed those, we Shazan. And the first one, living along the Atchafalaya, we're hoping uh, Carrie's to help, we've talked with Carrie. We're gonna put that in, and then both of them are actually gonna put in Cajun Coast. The second one is highlighting the, um, the museum in Berwick. So hopefully we can have people stop here, see what we have, and maybe go on. Bring you go on and, and speak to what you're doing. We have a, an Explore Morgan City app. There was a first tour of walking tour down Morgan City. Now there's a second tour. It's a hidden gems driving tour. It does include the Ring Museum, Lake Ann Park, Korean Tower, the Divers Memorial, a lot of other places in town. It's interesting stuff. You should download the app. Somebody drove to the park with it yesterday. Thank you very That's much. 6,700 people this year have viewed it. So it's a little bit of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Bryce suggested we put some resources on it. The app can contain 12 tours. So now we have a list of community resources for voters, visitors to the area. 
we can expand on that. In the works right now, I'm done, I'm just getting approval. A black, we don't want to call it black, preserving the past history tour of Morgan City. About 13 different locations, churches, Green Book locations, some of our prominent um, first mayor, first black mayor, first black postmaster, first black newspaper publisher, things like that. Um, needs to be voiced over, uploaded. That is going to require some funds because the app requires a yearly subscription, working on that. We could possibly even do a preserving the past book has been suggested using high school kids to help research and write it. So if Morgan City High School people were still here, we would talk to them. We've been talking a little bit about it. And um, just writing a few things for the Daily Review, which seems to be well received, and uh, a couple of t-shirt designs. I drew Main Street. So part of that is going to be on the Main Street t-shirt. Possibly G and J, who's having a 60th anniversary, will use their block for a t-shirt. And we're hoping, um, we were grant, we're hoping that we can do more banners. We did those as samples, but mm -hmm. more banners that we can use to highlight monthly or bi-monthly or whatever to put around town so people can see those things. And Greek's working very, very hard. Um, that preserving the past tour, um, the history of Morgan Black community. I don't know, Ruby, is that going to be part of the, yeah. the Juneteenth ride, right? Yes. So do you want to give us that date? Uh, Just, the date is June 15th. We get at 8 a.m. at Mount Philbin Baptist Church. And we're going to highlight six different um, churches, Mount, uh, Mount Philbin, Mount Zion, Walmsley, Lee Chapel, Missouri, and Mount Arrow. And after it concludes, we're going to meet up the Jimmy Johnson Memorial Basketball Court. So we have free food, free fun, and adult bingo with price prices. And it's fun, and it's it's Everything's a great free Yeah, it's great. Okay. Fun, fun. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, the state is working on an African American trail. Um, Alfreda Edwards was helping me um, do that. She mentioned Rosen Wall Schools. Well, well. This is a thing. It's the I don't have all the information. Um, I have Nate. You know, Alfreda was supposed to be helping me with it. It can't just be, um, you know, like this historical church in Morgan City. It has to have like either historical. Um, it has to have um, like for example, I nom we nominated. Um, I'm trying to think what we nominated the film, um, but they said they might that one might not be included. The tar the Tarzan movie that was filmed in Morgan City was the first movie that African Americans were used to play African Americans because of so that. To play portrays Africans, people. right? And in the in the past, it was and so she she said she didn't know that one might be too controversial. Um, I talked about um, what's the school in Franklin. Um, Sega Brown. Sega Brown. Brown. The significance of Sega Brown. Um, the guy who was in charge of the Pentecostal movement um, was born in Franklin. Um, his parents were both enslaved, um, and he ended up going to California. They didn't know that one would be included because his what he did was actually in California. But um, it, it has to have more depth than just this is such and such. This is I such think and we such. Have a lot of but yeah. if you all have that, there's a, uh, we could submit as many as we want. Um, and um, I know Alfred was going to talk to. Um, this is the script. Okay. More than this. And, and if you, if, if anybody has some free time, I can give you the website that you can submit this information. Since you have it handy, right. you can just cut and paste it into right. the, the right. forms. Okay. And um, if you'd be willing to help me with that. And the business. Want information, this information here, mm -hmm. because they want to display this stuff in, in their okay. facility. So we're talking to that. That's great. Uh, and and um, Alita couldn't make it, but she just wanted to let everybody know that we did get the um, receptacle grant. Uh, Kids in here, we got the, the grant for the receptacles. 
play some more out. Uh, I think y'all had a great turnout. Um, a lot of people here were at the last trash bash. And it's, you know, hopefully Morton C. Grove is there. We can keep it clean. I mean, she's not here, so I'm going to go on. We had, we had several, I think it was about five cleanups around the area on that, during that week. And uh, a small amount of people uh, collected a lot of trash. I mean, there was one group there that, uh, it was amazing. I think there was like 14 people and they collected 80 some bags. It was just stunning. But my thing about it is, is we, you know, is it's a band aid. Mm -hmm. We gotta change the direction we're going and stop picking up people's trash. Yeah. We need to stop them from throwing it up in the first place. And that's that's where I think the state needs to be. The state has a on. booklet. Yeah. And I was sent several booklets on that. I'm sure um, Lee got some of those as well. But it talks about how to try to take your Main Street events and your festivals and make them um, as litter free as possible or giving recommendations. Like when you go to the fest, uh, Mardi Gras, don't just throw your, your, your trash. Bring a trash bag with you and, and clean up your stuff. Um, it's got really practical stuff. Yeah, we, and we actually, it's with, you were talking about this and you said, you said that about picking up the trash and, and getting the community involved with everything. And Sunshine's here because I think you and Miss Mancuso were picking up trash on Railroad Avenue during the trash bash, right? right. So I know she's right, she's in the um, she's in the coal shoot area in that neighborhood. So she's interested in in you know just motivating her neighborhood to to yeah. to take more responsibility to clean it up to fix it up. Yeah, and I, um, I, I you know, carry a five gallon bucket and grab it in the back of my truck. Right. And I, I empty that five gallon bucket but probably just, every seven to ten days. Just I'll stop in the middle of the road sometime to pick stuff up. So I was thinking on the way over here, it just popped in my mind. I haven't talked to, to Lee about it, but uh, I've, got, I've got grabbers. If somebody wants one, get them a bucket. Yeah, I'll give you a grabber. You can carry it in your truck well, or your you, car so you can stop and pick up trash that you see. Just give me a show and I'll, I'll give you one. Price, you're in Sacred Heart. You're in Sacred Heart. Yeah. Subdivision. Yeah. And you were responsible for getting that sign up yeah. in your neighborhood. And so that was the whole point of, of, of identifying those neighborhoods. Berwick has their neighborhood signage to get to try. We, I mean, we can't do these things just us in this room, but to, if people in those areas would take responsibility and start to just maybe start to figure out ways to motivate their community and, and or just we're just spreading the word and we take pride in our neighborhood and uh, as a response as responsible citizens. So, you know, a little bit at a time yeah. goes a long way and and i had just one yeah. other thing uh, um we are getting i'm uh, just kind of a rough count mm -hmm. uh, probably three to five maybe even a couple more uh, yachts coming into the uh, down oh, the dock yeah. mm -hmm. and uh we need to make sure we get out on the on the yachting app social media what's available we talked about trying to get i actually have that account. magazine on um the the booklet yeah. i used to kj coast used to have an ad yeah in that but they stopped contacting me and i just waterways, yes waterways yeah. yes but there, we received uh we received a, a thank you letter from a yacht that was here that was actually spectacular and I've written an article and sent it to the newspaper. And she's written an article to the newspaper. It was, it was, <laughs> if you read that, you would want to come to Morgan City. I saw that. No matter where I you saw were. it made me want to come and to Morgan City. Doing the tours, you know, on the rig, and we're going to be probably clo uh, close to 4,000 people this year. Everybody, if you spend, spend time talking to them, they all say the same thing about this area. It's brilliant. The people that are more helpful. They invite them to their homes. They, they show them where to go. They'll thrive them if they're broken down or help the yachters coming in. And we really need to, to, to build on that uh, ability that we have here as a community. Question, question. Sorry. Did you I'm, talk about the last time putting signs at the dock? I think tell them where to go. We talked about that. It yeah. was Earl yeah. has signs and mm -hmm. Hannah Roy, well, our grandmother. Well, that's what she signed, though. Like, like she's talking about the boys, like at the shop yes. or whatever. Mm -hmm. We had a process. We had a board out there. We're in the process of getting another board made out there to put flyers, to put things, just a glass board out there. There's one in, uh, inside that's, that's yeah. Yeah. one with a little map. Yeah. Something on the outside with some right there by the, by the guys tie up with 
you know, events or whatever. Anyway. Well, and services, yeah. you know, the grocery stores. Yeah. Well, actually, 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 we work on that app okay. to I, have. Uh, you want to on the app for that? So I I'll have some. Like a, like a, with some more information. Oh, good. Because so there good. is the, the yacht traffic that comes to get way more than people. It's crazy. Because yeah. Yeah. you have to. Yeah. If you're going to go to Florida. You have to, if you're from Texas. Melody, the, the lady who hired my back to take it to do planning, uh, planning zone, and she takes care of the punch tree. She loves to fish, so she's on the dock all day long. <laughs> on weekends, which she's there. Yeah. I get calls from her like 10 o'clock well, on Saturday. Hey, this guy, this, what can we do for her? So she's real adamant about helping the, the, the people that she, as far as we're talking, we're talking to him about where y'all have where y'all, how y'all know to be on here? This particular guy broke down in yeah. May, and he brought him here. He told him at the end, but that's the reason he was going to go to Key West. And he's been here for almost a little a month now. And I was like, You still going? He said, No, we have enough fun here. As soon as I get my boat back, I'm going to take the boat back home. We love the day. It's like, you know. That were rerouted because they were locked closed. Yeah. And they had to come here instead yeah. and change their whole route of where they were going. And they decided to stay here for two weeks instead yeah. of continuing that, on. That little sailor, which I saw that stopped there for a while, he was from Galveston. He was stopping here. He's going to Argentina. So, yeah, yeah. There's, there's literally <laughs> hundreds there. of boats pass by. It's like it's like mostly yeah. Chamalaya every year yeah. going, going north and south in the migration. So it's a, it's a new opportunity. And when you get letters like that, you, you, you need to make sure you see it in the paper. That it's, heritage, it's <laughs> yeah. The Atchafalaya National Heritage Grant, you've actually, um, Charlie, we could apply for that to get that, um, if you wanted to get that outdoor um, mapping, that material that you do the outdoor mapping. Oh, do you put a map up? Yeah, it's it's a, like a like when you go to a zoo or yeah. an interpretive panel. That's what I meant. An interpretive panel. That's that outdoor uh, that's stuff. That's what I was thinking of. When I we was could on. we could actually you could do a grant. Um, I mean, we can easily do the match on that. We don't have to have the copy yet. If you have the dimensions on the size of a company in Florida. Like a shadow box thing, something we open to change stuff up. So oh, that okay. would be under, under, out of the weather, but so we could change and put like different flyers and okay. stuff like that. Somebody Somebody would, if you like had one that wasn't no, protected like that, if you wanted to put okay. something. As long as we have she still there. Like if you had something at the park yeah, that you just wanted to have. Welcome to Morgan City Yard and things like that, like a little kiosk. Because that was another kiosk on the dock yeah, side. Yeah, no, we would have called for fuel. We would have called for fuel. We would have called for fuel. Oh, was it removed? Okay, it's all going to be removed. We've got a kiosk in the world. You want one? They have a few. Our office will be the location of the company in the yard. We get a lot of visitors in our office. We're usually some of you. Yeah, good. Okay, and is there, I mean, everybody, this was a great meeting. We got, we spoke about a lot, we talked about a lot. There are a lot of things that we can improve on and we've improved on a lot of things already. So we're really excited about all the enthusiasm. Um, I think that, um, you know, when we come here and, and that Carrie brought some handouts and, and Greg brought a handout, if there are some things that you think about, because we don't meet, we only meet once every three months. So if there are things that you see that you think we've got to share this at that next meeting, write it down, get it in a handout, have copies for everybody, and we can pass that out. We can go through it a little bit quicker. But I do think that some of the points that we keep talking about, we need some breakout sessions. Colleen's not here. She volunteered. Um, these are things that we can't do here every three months. So um, and, and we, uh, we, we, we sort of are doing a lot of things at, at our computers and all of the, and in marsh grass and uh, his, historical things along the Atchafalaya, which we've all spoken about today for two hours. <laughs> it's right back there. So, um, you know, we're going to close today, but we, we can't just stop what we're doing. And uh, thank you all for coming. You don't know. We just really appreciate this. I the community last, does. There's a one last thing, if I may. I mentioned last time uh, the Old Field Divers Monument. We uh, gave three $1,000 scholarships to so called <coughs> Community College to the dive, dive school. We gave them uh, $20,000 for starting an endowment fund, which hopefully will be matched dollar for dollar by the state. Uh, during the divers rally that we had at the end uh, last weekend in uh, April, we uh, had enough money uh, and, and raised some more money 
and we're, we have another $20,000 that we can give to the endowment fund, which we hope the state will match. So that will give them an $80,000 endowment fund uh, for the dive school program. And so y'all had a big turnout, too. We're pretty great. excited about yeah. that. We had about 175 people at the, at the unveiling again and the, uh, and the um, coffee spoil. So well turned out really, really also, excited and proud. Another point. Uh, Mr. Charlie was released from the shipyard June 15th, 70 years ago this June 15th. So, so you have a big party? So can you go over there and have some champagne on the... <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of the committee meeting, at the end of the National Historic Landmark Committee meeting, I took the opportunity to invite them all to the annual Louisiana Shrimp and Petroleum Festival, showing how both of the, these two harvest industries do get along. Yes. Thank you all. And our next meeting is Friday, September 13th. <laughs> Thank you all. September, Friday the 13th.